What's going on? Today is Feedback Friday. My name is Luan. I'm a professional musician and live streamer, and I was also a graduate of Berklee College of Music, where I graduated magna cum laude in songwriting. And um, we are basically building a free music school. So if you want to jump in and check us out, um, the link is in the description. And this thread is where students can post their videos and I will check them out live during the live stream. So today we walked through um, Brad, Simon walking through their gigging process and starting gigging. Um, and if you want to make money in music, that might be helpful to you. And also Caleb was checking out how to play inside of a band uh, in his church group. So if that helps you, check it out and can't wait to see you on the next Feedback Friday. Oh. Um, so what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to play these videos and then uh, I'm going to give comment to, commentary on them and then um, we'll, we'll see how much value we can get out of this for you guys. I'm, I'm very excited to see how this will, will go. Uh, okay, cool. That way. I'm trying to I'm going I'm trying to fi fix the frame so it looks decent for for YouTube and for you guys. Okay, cool. So, um first person who's up for Feedback Friday is Brad. Let's go, Brad. I'm very excited. So, I love how everyone who's part of the Accelerated community um <laughs> yes, it is. Oh my god. <laughs> You're right. You're the voice coming off the staircase. Anyway, we're getting distracted here. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so Brad said, um, start at 10 seconds. This is the level of is this at the level of getting paid uh getting paid to play live? If not, what needs to be changed? And if it is, how do I make it better? Focus on vocals with a solid but simple accompaniment. Um, working up many more songs at this level of listenability in my mind. All right. I already know this is going to crush because Brad's part of the accelerated community and we love Brad. Killing the blues. For starters as well, Brad, I just want to say right off the bat, thank you so much for just like literally grabbing your iPhone and pushing record. Like... That is the hardest thing for so many people to, to even do. So straight off the bat, crushing it. Oh, wait a, one second as well. I'm giving feedback and I've got, um, I've got God voice on. Let me do this. Let, let me go on a podcast mode. This is better. Does this sound better? Do I sound like it's a sexy podcast? It's like I'm Chris Willax and, and Alex Homozi and Ali Abdal, all, the, all those podcasters. The famous podcasters, Dylan Kane from the Dad Bod Bod. Dad Bod Pod. <laughs> Leaves were falling just like animals in color and gold. They said. So off the bat, fantastic. Like if you're wondering, can I get paid to, to sing and perform this? Yes, you can. You could go and play in a bar and do this and you would absolutely be fine, Brad. Like this is going to be fine. Uh, only thing which is going to mess with you here is some parts just in the beginning here. Uh, there were parts where the guitar was slightly out of sync with the voice. Now, Simon's following on Twitch. What up? <laughs> I love this. Um, so what's going to happen is typically if your guitar is going to go out of time, it's no problem even when you're gigging, um, just as long as your vocals never go out of time. So I'm pretty sure you absolutely crushed and you didn't change vocal rhythm, but that was the only thing that you mucked up slightly there, which is absolutely fine. So I'm stoked. So, so far, you could absolutely play any song like you just played and you would be able to perform and gig. Nah. And 
you've even got like a walk down. Look at that. That's better than so many other people. So many other people will just kumbaya and they just won't even worry about those little nice things. Oh, Simon, thank you for subscribing on Twitch. <laughs> You're too nice, man. Look at it. We, we canceled the accelerator program, so now everyone's <laughs> subscribing. <laughs> yeah. Woo woo. Well, you know, we're going to put on some a bunch of cool stuff for you guys very, very soon. <laughs> Caleb's on here too. Oh, Brisbane boys in the chat. Something. I hope you never do because there is nothing sadder than we turn or say love. Okay, uh, Brad crushed it exactly what you did just then absolutely awesome like that so so that part where you're allowing the arrangement to really really sit in i feel like this verse that you're jumping in maybe the first verse you weren't super confident but this verse is like it's fire so like you would do do not be like i've already told you this before but you're a hundred percent ready to go and perform. Like, do not be afraid. Jump out there. I think the thing you need to get over is actually just being in front of people and and like failing. Because once you get out and start performing with people, especially at gigs, the first thing that's going to happen at the gig is you're going to start performing. And you're like, oh my god, this is my moment. I'm going to perform, and everyone's going to be watching me, and everyone's going to be paying attention to every single thing I do. And they're going to, if I miss a chord, they're going to like. And then once you realize and no one cares. No one's watching what you do. Like you're in, the, they're talking to their friend, having a beer, eating their food, whatever it is that they're doing. And like the only time that they, there's the only show that I've ever done that people have been like 100% focused on me was a show that people paid a ticket to come watch me play. So that's the only time that I've ever had that. And, and it was the weirdest feeling in the fucking world. Because normally I had to fight for people's attention and fight for people to engage with what I did and I had to be clever. Whereas the second I played the first note, people were ready. And I was like, whoa, um, this is a weird feeling. And so that's a really, really cool, cool one to do. But normally when you're playing bars and gigs, you are either just filling up the sonic space um, in which the only thing that you can do like to fuck it up is play out of time and that's it. Like you can sing out a key, you can do all those things, but playing out of time is the only thing and you are crushing it because that sounds so cool. And like that, that part that you just did there where you like added spice because it there's like this tempo that like we're getting used to as we get through the song, but then you added that nice little Love. with that like suspension chord, that you little, that little sus thing that you did there. Da, 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 da. like so nice um and that that's really really good breaks to have throughout your song Okay, I mean, right now, I don't want to go and listen to... I mean, I could listen to the rest. Yeah, it, I just think it's going to be the sim similar to what we've been listening to, but you, you've, you've got it, man. It's completely ready to go. You're ready to gig. Now, the only thing that I'm going to say here that's going to help you to... Like, you're like, hey, what can I do to improve this? Right now, the only thing that you can do to improve this is get more songs and the next video that you post, or like if you can do this by next Friday, would be wicked is um, record with your iPhone with your PA set up. So even if your PA is down very, very quietly, um, I want you to set up uh, a PA exactly how you would do a live gig because the first barrier to entry is, um, well, they're actually kind of 50-50 because you can't even get on a stage if you don't have this. But the first thing is, do you have a microphone? Do you have the lead? Do you have the mic stand? Do you have the lead to plug in your guitar? Do you have a mixer? Do you have a PA speaker? Do you have 
what is required to actually perform uh, at, a, at a venue or anything. And usually you want to be self-sufficient. So I would recommend everyone be in a position where they could have every single piece of equipment ready. Um, Cause some venues you don't need to bring a PA. Some venues like they've got a mixer, like, but ideally um, you would want to have everything yourself. So for me, I have everything and I have my own mixer and what I, even at venues that do have mixes, like I'm about to go play a venue on Sunday and they're going to bring like a fucking, like a $4,000, $5,000 mixer that is so killer and wicked. I have never used that mixer. I haven't dialed any of the, of the stuff. I don't have time to sit down and tinker with it or even give a shit about it. I'm going to rock up with my $600 mixer that I have that I know I can make sound good. And I literally plug it into one of the channels and then just push up the fader and I treat it like I'm Spotify. So it's like, if you can be self-sustained in your tone and your sound, that's the most important thing that you're going to have to do here. So aside from you building up repertoire, the performing element of you singing and playing is absolutely amazing. So you can totally jump in and perform. Like when I say it's amazing, I'm like, it's amazing in the sense that you have hit, you have checked all boxes of can I be listenable? Will people not hate what I'm doing? Um, and things like that. And that's all that matters. Your goal is to exist in their space. And your goal is to not make it hard for them to eat their food or hard to talk to their friends. Too many musicians are like, it's about me, watch me, things like that. The amount of times I perform and I think that no one's even listening but because I respect the fact, I'm not trying to fight for their ears. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do good music and I'm going to put the inputs and whatever outputs happen, it's all good. Like I will play and then I will finish my set and I'll be walking off to go get like a drink or whatever. And people will come up to me and be like, hey, we love listening to your set. It was so good. They didn't even clap. They didn't do anything. They didn't give, interact or show any like enjoyment um, visibly. But then they came up to me afterwards and were like, we loved what you did. So um, just know that that's your role in a gig unless the venue is hiring you to make people dance, which I would not recommend you play that song to make people dance. <laughs> uh, so like doing a party set, that's a different ball game. But if you're just wanting to gig, go and play in restaurants, do all those things, you have checked every single box as a performer. So the only things you have to do is get a repertoire and then get the equipment to help crush and um, try and be self-sufficient in your setup. And then we'll, we'll um, if you can post the video, we can start working through like EQ settings and things like that on your mixer and stuff like that. That might be handy. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. So great job, Brad. Uh, you, you have earned all, all three of the clap, the air horn and the yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's go down to, oh, look, boom, throw that like up there. And what what gift should we give? What gift should we give Brad, y'all? Should we give him the Yoda yeah? The Yoda yeah. Let's do it. Boom. Yoda yeah. Let's go. Well, it's not Yoda. I know it's a different one. Um, Define David. Uh, you've been playing guitar for seven months now. Learned two songs start to finish. About to finish learning Who Says by John Mayer. Oh, awesome. That's a great song. Um, uh, when should you start learning scales? Uh, Defiant David, uh, honestly, you should never learn scales. Uh, I'm, sorry. Always learn scales. Don't practice scales. You jump into scales once they serve you. So I will have a full section going into this very soon on uh, fretboard theory and things like that and how you can use it. You just need to know scales to get you where you need to go um, to achieve it, like whatever goal you have. So like if you're learning scales, you would be learning scales to help you improvise. You would be learning scales to help you get into guitar licks and things like to understand what's going on um, in, in the music that you're playing. But otherwise, scales don't really serve much of a purpose. If you just want to play music and copy the artist, see you later, Samantha. If you just want to copy the artist, just play the song and play it note for note and just be a parrot. And like, that's it. It's muscle memory at that point. You don't need to know that this is a D mixolydian, blah, blah, blah. You just need to be like, all right, he plays the seventh fret, sixth fret. Like, that's it. You just, you don't have to do anything fancier. You just play the music. So, uh, cause the problem is a lot of people are like, I need to learn scales. And then they sit down learning scales and they stop playing music and then they fall out of love. 
the best thing that you can ever do to find David, especially since you're new to guitar, is don't stop playing guitar. So whatever keeps you playing guitar, do that. And and then don't get distracted. Um, and if you haven't joined our free music school, definitely join it. This is what we're doing right here. We're doing Feedback Friday, giving feedback on everyone's performances who have posted here. Or buy, or buy guitars. Sorry, I, I forgot to read this. I don't know. Listen to all of this. My church crew after first joint practice. We still have a long way to go, but it's Sunday. <clears throat> it's getting better in your opinion, yeah? Work on Rhythm Park during the verses and then went to use triads um, in the breakdown sections. Okay, so the... Um, in this in this part, is that guitar playing that I'm hearing right now? Because you said, is there two people that play? Like, is there two guitarists? I need to know which one's you. So afraid, I heard you pray. Is it you? Are you doing that arpeggiated thing? Is that you, Caleb? Or is that the other guitarist? Oh, so you're playing all those guitar parts, Caleb. Is that you playing every single one? Please tell me that's you playing every single one. <laughs> Caleb, I'm so proud of you. I remember when we had our first chat. So I remember when you first joined the Accelerated and, and you were like, you showed me that one video of you playing and, and I, immediately we went down this road of like, getting into triads and like just understanding arrangement and learning how to fit within the band. Dude, you have applied every single thing that I have said and you have been crushing it. That is great. What does the band think of that? Like, what does the band think of you guitar playing? It sounds so great. Cause like, I mean, obviously you're going to keep improving and getting better and better and better, but like your arpeggiation thing that you're doing there. They like it? Oh, dude, because uh, that that part that you had there. Look, you can hear it. Look at his face. Look at that guy's face. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't zoom in. Damn it. How do I zoom in? Oh, no, it's like literally zooming out. No. Look at the MD's face when you hear... Like he, when you hear the singer and you hear the guitar play, like you hear Kayla's playing. So alone, so Look at him go. He's just like, yes. Cause that was me too. I was like vibing as well. I was like, man, that is really well. Like you sound musical. Great job, dude. Oh man. I'm so proud of you. That's fantastic. You're absolutely on track. That is so good. Like, <laughs> You're hiding. <laughs> I heard you pray. Because your goal as a player, as the guitar player, is to make everyone sound better. I mean, if you can approach, especially in a band, if you can think about playing with people and being like, hey, I need to make everyone sound better. First of all, you're going to start eliminating ego from your mind, which is great. A lot of guitarists have like this ego of like, I need to shine. Whereas... If you can jump in and be like, hey, I want to make everyone else sound really, really good. In turn, making everyone else sound really good makes you sound really good. Then they want to see you do more cool shit and then you get to do cool shit. So it's like it all kind of like if you start from a place of like b humbling yourself and then thinking about everyone else first, then you will get what you want out of music, which is like, well, I mean, 
you never know. There's lots of ways to do approach it, but I found that that approach to music, to playing with other people has always served me the best and has always resulted in great performances where everyone's like, oh my God, this performance was fire. And it really just takes one person. It takes one person in the band to think like this and that's it. Having nailed it down, yeah, so there's some fall away. In Jesus' name, it may be midnight. Okay, so there, so one thing I would watch is this guy, your MD, Caleb, is very cool. Like very cool and very good. And um, what you're going to do to improve is try and get really tight on the parts where you jump out. So you see there where you have like a little bit of a slide that carries. You're holding that note longer than them. When there is a something that bump, dun, 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 bump that it should be like that. You, because you're holding, oh, so that while everyone's out, um, especially because if she's singing. Yeah, so if you could, if you can make it more staccato, would be sick. So like right there, that's a really good like one. And then you come in, but you see how you linger there. That's going to, little things like that, that's going to help you crush. That's going to be like if I was an MD. Um, I would be like 20 out of 10 clapping you, uh, if you didn't, if you were like completely on, on that break. So finding any rit like you rhythm, uh, uh, rhythm unisons will absolutely crush, um, talent show to audition, please. Jennifer, no, I'm not really interested in that stuff, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, we're going through our students, uh, performances. We're doing feedback Friday. Look at me like acting like we do feedback Friday all the time. This is the thing we do all the time. It's the first one. <laughs> but hey, what do you guys reckon? I'm actually loving this. This is so fun. Um, I really enjoy this. So. Jennifer, thank you so much. You're amazing. <laughs> Jenny's like, Jenny's like, you need to jump in and do this. And I was like, ah, oh, I wish. I really appreciate it. Thank you. That's like, that's like the nicest, <laughs> nicest thing. And you did pretty good there. Da 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 bam. Yeah, um, everything that you see him do, anytime the, the keyboard player is not playing, don't play. And you want to like lock in with every rhythm hit he does. I love that, dude. You got that. Okay, I can see what you mean. That's a really, really challenging section there. This little B section. Like that's, and anytime you're in a band, that's the stuff that matters. You can hear them together. Like this is the first time that they've been practicing this one together. Don't worry. Okay, Caleb, do not worry about wrong notes. Wrong. There's no such thing as a wrong note. And I can even pull up, uh, <laughs> what's his face? Um, there's no such thing as wrong notes. There's wrong rhythms. So, uh, yeah, Victor Wooden. Yeah, ah, there you go. Caleb's got it. Victor Wooden. So if you play the wrong note, that's fine, but you're locked in on the rhythm. So it doesn't make a difference. Like the note will happen and it's gone and no one's ever going to think of it. But if you mess up the rhythm, like no one's playing and then you play like the, like you played the right note with the slide, but, but I heard that note 
um, I heard that note pop out way more than the other one. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that rhythmically you're locked in. Notes can be like, you can be tragic with notes. There's no stress. Like anytime, anytime I'm with my band and the, and then the, the, my band members do the wrong note, like my bass player might play the wrong note. That doesn't annoy me. But when he changes like the rhythm and he like, and like I have to now change my playing to help out with the rhythm. Um, that's the only part that challenges me. Uh, so when you're in a band situation, respecting the rhythm is the only thing that matters. Obviously you want to get great and you want to do all the right notes. But I mean, like if something bad happens, like you play a wrong note, don't be mad about it. Even if I, I kid you not, I've done this in gigs and no one has like, I've actually been complimented. Like, I don't even know the notes. I'm guessing the notes. I just play it correctly in time. Like I have the correct rhythm of whatever the phrasing is and I crush the gig. Like I just, I'm like, I know it's in this scale. These are all the, the notes in the scale that are diatonic. So I can't, I can't play. I'm technically playing the wrong notes, but they're not out of key. So I just play them in time and it will be all right. <laughs> and it worked. So. <laughs> And I'm noticing, are you doing a lot of sliding in here? Well, 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 well. There's a, it sounds like there's a little bit of sliding in there. I would do two versions of it. Do one with the sliding and then one with a ba, ba, ga, ga. Be very, very staccato and lock in and then see what your MD likes better. Like, remember... As long as you get, if the starting point of your playing goes from completely locked in with the band, like if you are super, super locked in with the band as a guitar player, that's the first point, like that's your your starting zone. And then once from there, you start branching out, being like, hey, you can start adding a little bit of like a slide here or there, whatever. Um, and that will crush. <laughs> Mel is like, <laughs> wrong notes drive me nuts, but you agree with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's the truth. <laughs> There's there's one there's a there's a cover that we do we do lose yourself with the band and sometimes I, I I literally have to say to my bass player I'm like just play the root note I don't want to hear you do anything else and then sometimes he just like gets carried away in the gig and he like forgets and then he'll start doing the the like uh he'll start doing the the diminished thing that um that's happening in the guitar part to like because he gets bored um because it's literally one note. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, dude, you're throwing me off. <laughs> but he plays in time, so I can still rap. So it's all good. be pretty annoying that would be a that'd be a challenging thing to get in time got a little yeah i was about to say i was like here it, it feels like you guys are really grooving and like being creative okay that sounds a bit more like a jam so we won't stress about that but dude that was crushing. I loved it. I mean, thank you so much for posting that. But that um, does that give you value, uh, Caleb? Does that give you a bit bit more uh, context of like, you can literally do whatever you want when it comes to playing guitar. That is my approach and what I've been taught in my in my experience. Uh, I I had to learn those lessons hard. Like, like I had I had my professors at Berkeley and they crushed me with that. They were like, never do that again. And I was like, fuck. I was like, that's brutal. But, you know, sometimes you need a, you, sometimes you need a bit of a spanking to do the right thing. <laughs> I, ha I got musical, I got many musical spankings 
at Berkeley. And uh, so that, that was definitely one thing. Yeah. Those cutoff notes. Yeah. Like that, just think how clean can I make this? And you, you, you be squeaky clean. And then once you're squeaky clean, then you can start um, elaborating. So you want to get in the box first. And then once you're in the box, you can start playing out of the box. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, musical spank is helping me better. I remember I had a Berkeley professor. Um, the first, like, this, is, this is my jazz story, right? So this is Luan being like, I want to play jazz. I suck at jazz, right? I am so bad at jazz. I'm at Berkeley College of Music. I went there to be a songwriter. Um, uh, tone is okay. Honestly, Caleb, tone is not a big deal. Tone, um, majority of the tone is going to come from your hands. Um, and it's not a weakness, dude. Like, do not worry. I get people complimenting my tone all the time and I suck with tone as well. Like I literally just guess and uh, hopefully it works. Eventually I will hire someone who understands how to use, uh, I want to buy one of those. Uh, I will literally buy the, uh, uh, the quad cortex or whatever. And then I'm going to hire someone to script out all the tone that I want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tone, like everyone's like, oh, you tone, like you put John Mayer on any freaking guitar. It sounds like John Mayer. You put John Mayer over any distortion. It sounds like John Mayer. Um, and like he could have the exact same effects and he'd immediately start playing like Stevie Ray Vaughan and it would sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan. And, but it would sound a bit more, it would still sound kind of like John Mayer, but the hands control everything. Um, uh, the, the tone that happens outside of that, that, that will be like a mastery thing that, that will take you some time. So yeah. And, and look, Hey, well, look, every time Mel's like, dude, anytime I can see, see Mel behind his screen, I can just picture him and be like, yeah, Luan's right. That's when I'm like, yes, cool. I'm not talking shit. Let's go. The dream. Cause Mel's also a guitar teacher. So, but yeah. Yeah, how hard you fret. I mean, look, that's mastery, dude. It's going to take you time to build up that tone. And you just like, you 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 will find your your groove through time and you will learn to experiment and you will learn to find where that happens. Um, but yeah, very good. But Mel, when are you going to post in our school, man? You're just like lurking everywhere. We You're going to do a feedback Friday. I want to I wanna give you feedback. And hopefully I can give you value on something like, and it doesn't even have to be like, if there's anything of mine that I can help you with, please just like jump in. Like, it doesn't even have to be about guitar playing. Like if you're like, Hey, um, can you rate my, like, uh, my video setup to help me get better video or things like that? You can be like, these are all the things I'm using and I can actually like help you out with that. If that's something that you want help with. Cause I remember you mentioned, uh, in the stream a while ago, you were like, uh, something about, um, you find it hard to get the content out there or something like that. Kim, we will see you later, Kim. Congratulations on getting ready. Have great fun at your date. Uh, hopefully um, he he's a great dude. So yeah, yeah, this is not, it doesn't have to be just playing. It can be anything. Um, like any anything that you think I could give you value on, post in here. Like there's there's no there's no right or wrong way to do this. You need to do live streams like me. Hell yeah, dude, jump in. I will have that content creator course done very, very soon. Like fucking like very, very soon. So soon. Like it, it's happening. Oh, wait. I pushed the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Playback is being... Oi. Stop being talk... Stop being toxic. <laughs> What are you doing? Okay, I have to watch it on YouTube. What's going on here? Okay, so is that is that speaker that you have there, um, Simon? Oh, hold on a sec. Refresh the page. All right, let's try that. Do a little refreshy here. Boom. All right, let's go. I don't even know what's going on here. All right, it is what it is. All 
Okay, so straight up, you didn't have anything. Uh, I need to know what do you want? What what do you want help with on this? Uh, you didn't type in what you need help me like want me to give you feedback on. I don't know what to help you out with. There's gonna be a million things I could say. I don't I don't know what your stressing point is. What's the main thing you want to get out of this? Feedback, dude. We don't have enough time for that. It's already two o'clock. Um, like whatever I see. Okay. Well. Okay, here's a Luan. I'm I'm gonna give you feedback on important stuff here. You're a total lurker. <laughs> no, you're not a total lurker. I know. I know you definitely help out. And I love how you engage in the community and and like respond to comments because I can't respond to everything. So I appreciate it. No, we love you. We love you, Mel. Um, all right. Okay, you don't know what to ask for. Okay, I'm gonna give you some straight up. Let, let's go. Absolutely fire. All right. Straight off the bat, you guys crushed it. You guys look fantastic. You look good. Um, you look professional. Look clean. That's great. Super, super important. That's all you. That's like a, a super underrated thing. Um, people are like, oh, it's about the music. It's like, no. First impressions count. The way you look matters. The way you present matters. All that shit matters. If a, someone is going to be giving you money to perform and entertain. Um, and people are sitting there eating their food and having their coffee and you look dirty and yuck. You haven't had a shower. You're wearing shorts. You're wearing flip-flops. You don't like, like you can pull off shorts at a gig if you're cool. Like Carl Walkner, he wears shorts at gigs because he looks cool. He looks like he should be wearing shorts because he is a vibe and his shorts look cool. But I watch gigs, like especially where I live, um, and these dudes rock up and they've got their shirt, um, and it's it's dirty <laughs> and it's like old and they're wearing shorts and they're wearing flip-flops and they're like they just like someone's eating their food and if they look over and they see someone dirty they they get annoyed like uh, and um it's not because i get annoyed i don't give a shit but like you gotta think it's about the customer always if you're playing gigs at bars and whatever it's about the customer every single time you want to hit every single thing and music is just one element uh there are so many elements that go into a good performance so <laughs> they lose appetite yeah and like what does it say for the brand so like say, you got to think about it because if you're a gigging musician you are b to b to c so you're business to business to cons customer so remember you are business to business first this is a this is like a little business class thing. So if you are uh you are if you are a gigging musician, you are providing a service to a business, they are hiring you to perform, and then from there, your performance is now serving their customers. And that's it. So you want to think, I need to serve the business first and then serve the customer. So you make sure your songs are good. You make sure when you interact with the business, you are no drama. You want to make sure that you look good. You want to make sure that they're, tr they're hiring a professional. Um, some people will get gigs because they're buddies and that's fine. You don't, you don't want to be like, oh, but these guys don't do it. Um, and it works out for them. It's like, you don't want to be like everyone else. If you want to be someone who crushes and gets all the gigs, you want to walk in and you want to have no stone unturned. That's how you get all the gigs. You want to walk in and be a great musician, be a great vibe, be nice to all the managers. If they're like, oh, you know, like, oh, it'd be so cool if you could kind of play this this kind of music first. Then you fucking play that kind of music first. <laughs> like, you just do what they like. Because um, uh, then once they're happy in their mind, you can't do anything wrong. So, like, the mu and then you want to think as well, like, if someone's hiring you at a restaurant or doing anything like that uh, and you look good and then people are eating their food, they will be like, oh, this guy looks good. And as long as you can back it up with good music, that's wicked too. Then they then they pair the the branding of you looking good, you singing good, the food being good. They're like, well, then this venue is good. So that's how you serve the, the venue through your um, appearance and things like that. So that's just the first two cents. It sounds great. The, the look is, it, you've already crushed that. So you absolutely crushed that looking professional. Don't ever think you're overdoing it. Okay, and Mel's also got one thing here. 
I just did what I asked for fun. It was gay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're playing weddings and doing things like that, the biggest trick, um, like this is something that I didn't, I used to think it was about like lots of communication is actually the biggest trick for gigging. Um, and especially private stuff and stuff that you get before, um, things like that. It's not about, uh, lots of communication. It's about when you give communication, them knowing what the next step is. That's it. You don't need to go crazy. You just need to be like, so when someone books me, I first have the communication. I'm like, all right, after this conversation, you're never going to speak to me again unless you book. And if you book, then after that conversation is done, then I will be sending you a questionnaire. You will fill out that questionnaire once you finish that questionnaire. Like, I will just tell them what the next step is, and then that's it. I'm like, once you book, we are locked in, and then a month before, I'll reach out to you, and you will get um, a lot of information on what the next step will be and preparing for your itinerary and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But, and then they don't, then they're, they're good. They're like, all right, cool. I know what to expect. And then they just forget about it. And then one month prior, I reach out. I'm like, hey, fill this out. Once you fill this out, then we will have a conversation. They fill it out. Then I have the conversation. Once I have the conversation and they filled out whatever they filled out, I'm like, all right, I can't wait to see you at your gig and we're going to crush and it's going to be amazing. They feel like it's every step is taken care of. I don't have to go over the top on communication. I just like narrow down my communication to make it super, super fine. But as long as the the communication itself is clear and then the next step, like they know when the next communication is meant to happen, um, that's all it, the most important part that you have to do. I'll get better articulating that in the future. <laughs> There was a slight drop in tempo there. You slowed down a bit, which is fine because I'm assuming that you guys were doing the halftime thing or whatever, and you're also a bit nervous. You're, you're absolutely fine. Dude, you got claps, man. Your very first song at your very first gig, and you got claps. Boom. Crush it, dude. I didn't get claps at my first gig. <laughs> One dude clap. I know, right? It's awesome, man. You just need one person to be like, hey, man, you're great. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> but the other thing I always, um, then you didn't get, yeah, that's fine. But that, okay, that is normal. That's fine. Honest to God, Simon, you are going to have people that clap. If they're not clapping, doesn't mean they're not liking it. That just means you're not doing a bad job. And sometimes you're performing and you're crushing it and a bunch of people are absolutely loving it and then someone comes up to you and is like, you fucking suck. And I kid you not, you're going to get that. Like, like I remember I was performing and I'm like crushing it, doing all this live looping. I'm like, I'm literally getting paid so much money to do these gigs and then this dude comes up to me at like some shitty bar that I was playing at and he's just like, I thought he was going to be like, oh man, I like that because it's, everyone was loving it, clapping and all this stuff. He like comes up, he's like, dude, don't quit your day job. And then he just like walked off and I was like, why? So just remember that don't take the good. Don't be like, oh, like this good was amazing. And then, and then like think that that's the, the feeling you need. You don't need to have that validation. Yeah, honestly, it's just people jealous. It's fine. Or, I mean, they might have like, there might, there might be something that they're right. Um, like I did something wrong. But 
for me, it doesn't make a difference. So he could say, I'm a piece of shit and I should quit music. And then another person could clap and be like, you're the best thing I've ever heard in my life. None of them will affect me because I don't need the person to say I'm good and I don't need the person to say I'm bad to determine whether or not I do it or don't do it. So when you're gigging, it's really, really important to be insular with your judgment on what you do. And what your judgment should be is, did I play that music the way I wanted to play it? And if I did not, what can I improve on next time? That's it. Focus only on the inputs. That will help your gigs so much. You will get so much better than everyone else. Because the other problem as well that will happen is I see musicians do it all the time. They think that no one cares, so then they don't care. So like the person will be like, oh, no one's clapping. No one's like, oh, so it's, it doesn't really matter what I do. Now that is the wrong approach. You want to be like, okay, maybe no one's clapping. No one's giving a shit, all that stuff, but I care. Make your barometer on what your gig is going to be based on your expectation of yourself. Because if one person in there matters, then you perform. Uh, like where I really like learned this was listening to Jerry Garcia and he's like, it's all about pushing your limit and always hanging there and getting better and better and better and better every time you have your instrument, better and better. And that's how you compound. And so when I'm playing my streams, like a lot of people will stream and they'll be like, oh, there's only like one person in the stream. Like this sucks. Why am I even doing the stream? Whereas I'm like, man, I'm going to get so fucking good at this song. And this one person that's in the stream, is going to fucking love it. And, uh, and if they don't fucking love it, I'm going to be like crushing it. And the next time I play this song, it'll be even better, you know? So it's like, that is the winning mentality. If you can think like that early on, cause I didn't have that and I wish I did. I would be so much better if I thought like that really, really early on, but dude, you're doing great. Oh, you guys did stop this train. Nice. Okay, dude, straight up. You crushed it. Um, I don't even need to listen to the music because the music doesn't matter. Uh, and I, and I'm, I mean that from a really, really nice place. The music that you perform here does not does not matter in the sense that you hit you hit the thing of like listenable. That's it. Your goal is just to be listenable. Your ability as a singer, as a guitarist, everything's going to improve. The two things that you need to have to gig and be booked all the time, the most important things is are you listenable and do you know the songs? So the only thing that I would say that is your biggest downfall downfall right now is you started with daughters and you and then the next song was stop this train i would 100 percent recommend you never ever double up on an artist unless someone asks you so if your whole crowd is like you just play taylor swift love story and they're like we love taylor and you're like do you want more taylor and they're like yes then you go boom and you do we belong together and you just fucking like you hook in that is the only time that you ever double up on an artist. So that's the only time I would recommend it. But outside of that, you literally, but that's fine, dude. You're just starting, man. You are just starting. So the rule is, this is my, my, my rule. Um, once one artist song set minimum, like all well, kind of max, maximum two. I never do more than two. Like very rarely will I do two. Because the acoustic guitars. That's fine, man. Like I said, you're at the start. Like when I say this, I say this from context that I have a hundred and like 120 songs to choose from at any point in time when I'm performing. I know a hundred and something songs, uh, off by heart, all the lyrics, all the guitar parts, everything. I can go in at any point in time and play them. And I have like 40 songs that are straight up bangers that I know everyone will love. And I have uh, like another 20 songs that are country bangers that I know anyone who loves country will do. I have a bunch of like Jack Johnson, John. You see all the songs I play in my stream. I have them all there. And you will randomly hear songs you're like, man, I didn't even know he knew that song. Like 
sexual healing and stuff. You need 20 songs for next Friday. Do you know how you'll manage? You just, like I said, the go through the singing and playing guitar course and you literally go and do that. Just get it listenable. You just need the chords in time with the vocal melody, uh, vocal rhythm, sorry, and then that's it. Do that for each song and then come back and then come back. A three hour gig, you play the first set and then you you just repeat shit. It's totally fine. But but dude, this is the fir- this is the start, man. My very first gig, I was playing with another dude playing guitar. The very first gig where I had to do on my own, I had 10 set, 10, 10 songs. 10 songs for a four hour gig. I did a lot of guitar solos. <laughs> it was me and a drummer, and then I would put the loop pedal on and I would just shred for like 10 minutes on a guitar solo in, the, in one song. But no one, no one was like people were paying attention, but I didn't disrespect the rhythm. So they might not be like, oh my God, like he's playing the same song again, like, oh, whatever. They might not be like that. But what I was doing was like keeping it chill. Yeah, you can. I, originals is the one where I'm like, maybe not because um, like they will like do what you need to do. Like the the thing is in business is like use what you've got. If you've got only John Mayer songs and in originals and things like that, then use what you got. Like you need to be on a stage. You need to perform. But if like pick the constraint of your business. Like, so right now you guys are jumping in, you are starting a business. You are building a service-based business of entertainment. Now, the number one constraint when it comes to gigging is can you play in time and do you know the songs? Now, if you can't play in time, fix that. You already know how to play in time. You guys are crushing it. It's fantastic. So that's done. You know how to play in time. Uh, Now, the next thing is do you know the songs, which I don't know. how. Do you know the songs? You need to hook in and be like, all right, I've got a list of 40 songs. However long it takes me to learn it, I'm going to do it. How many hours in the day have you got? Probably six to seven hours that you could probably practice. So instead of like playing video games, watching TV shows, doing anything like that, hanging out with friends, playing John Mayer songs, play Brown Eyed Girl, play this girl, like learn as many of the shitty songs that you need to learn as fast as possible. And if it's painful, welcome to, it's a job. You, you want to make money playing music? This is the first thing. And yesterday we were having a conversation about, um, we were having a conversation about like Wonderwall because someone was like, oh, I don't want to, I want to be a producer, but I don't want to like, uh, yeah, learn whatever. You you will know what's popular by going to gigs and then writing down what the best people use in their set list. So that's what I would recommend. If you're not gigging, go to gigs and write down their set lists. Write down everything that someone's playing. And then if you write down everything that they're playing, you will know what what what's a banger and what is the quickest one for you to learn? Like, I wouldn't recommend, like, so say I go to a gig and I hear someone play, you know, American Pie. I'm not going to go and learn American Pie, even though a bunch of other pe- people like it, because I know I would have to sit down and really, really fucking practice it. And it would take way too long for me to learn um, that song. I could learn a bunch, like three or four easy as fuck songs before I learned American Pie, because I had to memorize a bunch of lyrics and then that just annoying. Like I, I wouldn't want to learn it. So if someone really, really wants me to play it, I will push it on Spotify when I finish my set, but I will learn a bunch of other banger songs that are way easier. So just, you will gauge like what within your skill set, can I learn the song right away or will it take too much time? And so you will, you'll write down the set list. You'll pick out the songs that you know, you can connect with very, very fast. And then you would play them. Like, so say you're a, you know, like you know how to play John Mayer. Shotgun would probably be a very easy song to play. Uh, you play John Mayer. You, could, I mean, there's a lot. Of, Jack Johnson would be very easy to connect with. Jason Mraz would be very easy to connect with. There'd be like a lot of artists that you will find. Like Brown Eyed Girl would be easy to connect with, um, just because you just already have a lot of those stuff. Yeah, boom, perfect, happier. Like that's a good one. Bam. Um, so that's that's the trick. So. That's what I would recommend you do. You jump in, learn heaps of songs. And that's all you have to do right now at this point in your in your journey. Anyway, I really have to go because I am super far behind and I got to load this trailer with all my equipment and then I got to get ready and drive out to this gig. Woo woo. But thank you guys so much for the Feedback Friday and jumping in. Um, hopefully you guys like this. Do you guys like this? Uh, 
this format that we're, we're doing or trying out because um, I love it. 